the coordinates of the real space we live in are x, y, z. On the other hand, the space where the coordinates are kx, ky, kz is the reciprocal space. The lattice in the reciprocal space is called the reciprocal lattice. There are two reasons why we have to think about the reciprocal lattice. The first is to know the crystal structure of the material. In order for us to know the atomic arrangement of matter, we need to perform an experiment, called diffraction. Diffraction experiment is a method of observing reciprocal lattice. By analyzing the observed reciprocal lattice, the crystal structure corresponding to the real lattice can be known. The second reason is that the electronic state in a solid, is specified by the wave number, k. The potential energy of an object in real space is a function of position, x, y, z. On the other hand, the energy of an electron in a solid is a function of, kx, ky, kz, which is the coordinates of reciprocal space. By investigating the relationship between such energy, E, and wave number, K, the electronic state in a solid can be understood. These two are the reasons why we need to think about reciprocal lattice and reciprocal space. From now, I will explain the meaning and concrete examples in more detail. In solid state physics, we mainly target crystals in which atoms are arranged periodically. When the atoms are arranged periodically, the density of the electrons contained in them also becomes periodic, so it can be expressed as a wave. For example, if the atoms are one-dimensionally arranged at intervals, A, the wave N, Y, representing the electron density distribution can be represented by the sum of the waves with wavelength lambda equals A. In the case of complex 3D structures and potentials, the structure can be expressed by superimposing waves with various wavelength lambdas. Lambda is the wavelength of any wave in three-dimensional real space. For wavelength lambda, 2 pi over lambda is defined as wave number k. Wave number k equals 2 pi over lambda represents the number of waves per unit length, and once the wavelength lambda is determined, the wave number k is also determined. Since the atoms of a crystal are arranged three-dimensionally, the wave number k also becomes a three-dimensional wave vector, and has, kx, ky, kz, as a component. The space whose coordinates are, kx, ky, kz, is the reciprocal space. There is a reciprocal lattice in the reciprocal space that reflects the periodicity of the real lattice, corresponding to the crystal structure. The period of the reciprocal lattice is 2 pi over a. It is called a reciprocal lattice or reciprocal space, because the unit is the reciprocal of length, a. The momentum p is the wave number k multiplied by Dirac's constant. Therefore, the reciprocal space is also called the momentum space, or the reciprocal lattice space, wave number space, or k space. As described above, the structure and electronic state of a solid become periodic according to the periodic arrangement of atoms, so it is convenient to describe using waves. The reason why it is more convenient to use the wave number k in the reciprocal space, instead of the coordinates and wavelength lambda in the real space will be explained later. Definition of Reciprocal Lattice I will explain the definition of reciprocal lattice in solid-state physics. In real space with, x, y, z, as coordinates, let a1, a2, and a3 be the primitive vectors, corresponding to the axes of the unit cell. Correspondingly, in the reciprocal space whose coordinates are, kx, ky, kz, the primitive vectors of the reciprocal lattice are b1, b2, b3. At this time, there is such a relationship between a1, a2, a3 and b1, b2, b3. This is the definition of the primitive vector of the reciprocal lattice. The denominator of these equations is the volume of the parallelopiped, or unit cell, created by a1, a2, a3. B1 is proportional to the cross product of A2 and A3, so its direction is perpendicular to the plane created by A2 and A3. B2 is perpendicular to the plane created by A3 and A1, and B3 is perpendicular to the plane created by A1 and A2. The magnitude of B1 is the reciprocal of the spacing of the planes made by A2 and A3. In this way, when the real lattice is defined, the reciprocal lattice is also defined. For example, Consider the case of a two-dimensional hexagonal honeycomb lattice. 
Let's draw a reciprocal lattice when the primitive lattice vector is A1 and A2. The primitive vector of the reciprocal lattice B1 points in the direction perpendicular to the plane created by A2. After we determine the origin of the reciprocal lattice, we draw B1 diagonally downward to the right from the origin. The length of B1 is the reciprocal of the plane spacing, but first write it arbitrarily. B2 has the direction perpendicular to the plane created by A1. The length of B2 is also the reciprocal of the plane spacing, but it is the same length as B1 in the hexagonal lattice. After drawing B1 and B2, draw minus B1 and minus B2. Also draw B1 minus B2, minus B1 plus B2, etc. The lattice created in this way is the reciprocal lattice. If the real lattice is a hexagonal lattice, the reciprocal lattice is also a hexagonal lattice. As there is a unit cell in the crystal structure, there is also a unit cell in the reciprocal lattice. This is called the Brio 1 zone. The hexagon surrounded by vertical bisectors of vectors B1 and B2 is called the first Brio 1 zone. Highly symmetric points in the Brio 1 zone are named. For example, the origin is called the gamma point, the hexagonal vertex is called the K point, and the midpoint of the edge is called the M point. In this way, when the real lattice, which is an element of the crystal structure, is determined, the reciprocal lattice is also determined accordingly. Conversely, once the reciprocal lattice is understood, the real lattice can be known. Reciprocal lattice used to know the crystal structure. Once you know the crystal structure, you can calculate the reciprocal lattice. By checking whether the reciprocal lattice obtained by calculation and the reciprocal lattice obtained in the experiment match, the structure of the material can be investigated. In order to investigate the crystal structure, we need to carry out an experiment called diffraction. The most common diffraction experiment is the X-ray diffraction experiment. In the X-ray diffraction experiments, we inject X-rays into the sample and detect the scattered X-rays to investigate the structure. At this time, the intensity is measured by changing the incident angle, theta. The figure on the right is the powder X-ray diffraction curve of a sample. We can find the peaks when the angle of incidence, theta, and the plane spacing, d, of the sample satisfy 2d sin theta equal to lambda. Lambda is the wavelength of X-rays. You can use this formula to calculate the plane spacing, d, from the peak position. For example, the strongest peak is at 2 theta equals 35.6 degrees and its plane spacing d can be calculated as 2.52 angstroms. 2.52 angstroms correspond to this interval in the left figure. By analyzing the X-ray diffraction curve in this way, the crystal structure of the material can be understood. In practice, if you calculate the diffraction curve assuming a crystal structure, and it agrees with the experimental results, you now know that the assumed structure was correct. Here, dividing both sides of the 2d sine theta equals lambda, by d lambda, gives 2 sine theta over lambda equal 1 over d, and the unit of both sides is the reciprocal of the length. In other words, if the horizontal axis is the 2 sine theta over lambda, it has the dimension of the reciprocal of the plane spacing. Therefore, this horizontal axis corresponds to the wave number K in the reciprocal space. The peak in the diffraction pattern corresponds to the reciprocal lattice point. As described above, the reciprocal lattice can be indirectly observed in the X-ray diffraction experiment. On the other hand, in electron diffraction experiments, it is possible to directly observe the reciprocal lattice. An electron diffraction pattern can be obtained by using a transmission electron microscope. The electron diffraction pattern is an observation of the cross-section of the reciprocal lattice. For example, you can tilt the sample whose crystal structure you want to know and observe various cross-sections to investigate the three-dimensional reciprocal lattice. At the same time, the reciprocal lattice can be calculated by assuming the crystal structure. If the cross-section of the calculated reciprocal lattice matches the experimental electron diffraction pattern, the assumed structure was correct. The analysis of the electron diffraction pattern is performed in this way. The transformation between the real lattice and the reciprocal lattice is mathematically called the Fourier transformation. In the Fourier transformation equation, fx, which is a function of the coordinates x, in the real space, is transformed into fk, which is a function of the coordinates k, in the reciprocal space. 
For example, if you apply a process called fast Fourier transformation to the real lattice shown on the left, you will get the pattern shown on the right. This corresponds to the cross-section of the reciprocal lattice. It is in good agreement with the electron diffraction pattern obtained by observation using a transmission electron microscope. Therefore, we can see that the initially assumed structure was correct. It is also possible to obtain a high-resolution image by inserting an objective aperture into this diffraction pattern. This corresponds to the inverse Fourier transformation. In the inverse Fourier transformation, the function of the wave vector k, which is the coordinates of the reciprocal space, is transformed into the function of the coordinates x, in the real space. In this way, in the experiment called diffraction, we are investigating the reciprocal lattice. In order to know the crystal structure, we can investigate the reciprocal lattice in actual experiments. Reciprocal lattice used to know the electronic state of a solid. Many properties of solids are determined by their electronic state. The atoms in the solid are regularly arranged. Then, the electrons in the crystal exist under periodic potential. Therefore, the electronic state depends on the wave number, corresponding to the periodicity of the crystal. For example, the energy of an electron in a solid is a function of the wave number k, which is the coordinates of the reciprocal space. The relation between energy and wave number in a solid is called a dispersion relation, and is often called an energy band structure. For example, in the silicon band structure shown in the figure, the vertical axis is energy and the horizontal axis is wave number k. Silicon is a semiconductor because there is a region where energy does not exist for any wave number, that is, a forbidden band. The energy width of the forbidden band is called the energy gap. Once we know the energy band structure, we can also understand the motion of electrons in solids. Here, according to Newton's equation of motion, when a force, F, is applied to an object with mass, M, in real space, the velocity, V, changes with time. Velocity V can be expressed as the time derivative of position X. On the other hand, in solid-state physics, when a force, F, is applied to an electron in a solid, the wave number, K, changes with time. And the group velocity, which is the velocity of electrons, is expressed by the wave number derivative of energy. The wave number derivative of energy corresponds to the slope of the energy band. Here is the vicinity of the Fermi energy in the silicon band structure. For example, at the apex of the valence band indicated by the arrow, the slope is zero, so the group velocity is zero and the electron cannot move. When a force F is applied to such an electron or hole by applying an electric or magnetic field, the wave number changes with time. As the wave number changes and it moves to the right or left from the apex, the electron or hole will be able to move at a speed that corresponds to the slope at that point. Bands with higher slopes are faster, and bands with smaller slopes are slower. In this way, by understanding the band structure, we can understand the motion of electrons. Such an energy band structure can be directly observed by a measurement called, Angle Resolve Photoemission Spectroscopy. Here is the experimental result of a graphene sample, which is a two-dimensional material. It is similar to the band structure obtained by calculation. The slope of the band at Fermi energy, zero electron volt, is called Fermi velocity. If you calculate the Fermi velocity from the experimental results, it is about 1000 km per second. Thus, by examining the energy of electrons in the reciprocal space, we can understand the characteristics of the material. Here, we focused only on the electronic state, but states such as vibration in a solid have a similar dispersion relation. It is a summary. The definition of reciprocal lattice is a lattice in reciprocal space, whose coordinates are wave numbers, kx, ky, kz. There are two reasons to think about the reciprocal lattice. First, by examining the reciprocal lattice in a diffraction experiment, the crystal structure corresponding to the real lattice can be known. Second, the energy of an electron in a solid is a function of the wave number k, and the ek dispersion relation can be used to understand the basics of electron motion. Thank you very much for listening.